We're back for more. We're back for challenges. We are back for the Pinnacle podcast where both, well, Adam Booth, Golden and Heaton are all going to take you through, as well as myself, going to be taking you through everything you can expect for the PGL major coming up in Antwerp soon. Now, we're going to be talking about the challenges stage in this particular episode, what you can expect and what we, what the outcomes may be from this upper echelon of the first Swiss stage. So first up, I, I want to beg the question, what on earth happened with G2 and Vitality. I guess we can start off with G2 here, but uh, Golden, I'd love to hear your thoughts up first. I know you played with a bunch of these players in the past, and I, I'm, I'm sure you've kind of seen positions like these before. What are your thoughts? Um, like, my thoughts initially were, why are they struggling so much? Uh, is it because the nerves is because uh like how they're organizing do they have enough time to like for example g2 to organize themselves um uh well that that wasn't an, ex an excuse because um they did so well prior to this event uh or like this uh qualifier uh, and i i just really think it's uh, uh a mental a, a mental thing where they are so close to the like crossing that line and f getting that pressure off of them and they just manage to somehow in some rounds to uh, mess them up and honestly i just think it's uh they're not preparing they're not so well prepared for the teams that they are facing sometimes and that could mean that they are um just not expecting them to do the things they have in their heads, in their own heads. And mm. I feel like that that's a big, uh, big issue because if they all activate th the themselves, like the, the players, they have incredible players on that team. And if they're activated at the same time, uh, it just, it, it will not be this result. They should be in the le legend stage. Yeah, uh, I think maybe, I think in layman's terms, you can even say, I think it's the end of the honeymoon period for G2. Also, as soon as they brought Monesi in, they saw some great results. And after that, I think now is the point where they actually need to dive deeper into integrating him into the team. And I think, Heaton, you've had some coaching experiences in the past, also managing uh, also. So I kind of want to get your thoughts on to also bring someone to learn a new language. Uh, English also is not going to be an easy endeavor to be to be brought on like that. So um do you think there are simple, quick fixes for G2's issues right now? No, not at all. I think, I mean, they had a quite rough start with, with having, you know, Nico having to step in as in game leading, using uh, stand-ins for their events. I mean, kind of put them in the downhill spiral. You didn't recognize them, you know, because when they had Nick in the team in the major, they had this, I mean, really close run, even almost getting it to a third map versus Navi. When Alexi B is in the team, they had a rough start, you know, with Nico is not performing when he's in game, game leading. He should stay away from that, in my opinion. I mean, we, we've seen it before. He's putting up really bad numbers to be him. And I think they got into a bad spiral. And just like Golden said, I don't think they're prepared enough for, for the games and some of the opponents they're playing. So, I mean, because they just like... Exactly like Golden said, they have the firepower to possibly be the best team in the world. Quite possibly, in my opinion. But I don't think they had a, I know, a smooth start to, to it. I mean, they had, you know, Monesi really performing initially, but it, it kind of fell off if you look at the last couple of games and tournaments, at least. So I think they just had a bump in the road. I, I think we're going to see them come out swinging out of the challenger stage as well as in the legend stage, in my opinion. But... I'm going to jump over to Vitality because you mentioned, you know, having the issue to, to communicate in English. That's the reason I see that Vitality is, are struggling so bad right now. I'm just jumping over to it because you see a lot of rounds. You have those French guys play together with Frenchmen all the time. And you have those Danish guys played with Danish people. A lot of rounds. I, I mean, I can't count them on my hands. How many rounds you see, you know, some guy go down, the information doesn't come in to the rest of the team, and they're just standing there waiting and somebody flanks them and kill them. I mean, this basic CS, I mean, communication should have, have prevented that. But I'm not sure. I, I think because the firepower Vitality has is almost up to pair with G2, but they're, they're struggling a lot. And even though we, you see Dupree is, you know, putting in numbers like you haven't had in a long time, I think that their, their issue is the communication, in my opinion. I think they're struggling because they can't communicate to, to you know, have this team performing on the level they should when you have that because they have a very good setup 
in every single way. It's just, in my opinion, the communication is not there. And yeah. Yeah, it's your, it's, there are some really high hitters in those teams. So I guess yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, anything less than greatness is kind of a disappointment. Can I, I actually want, want to add to what Heaton said on Vitality. Uh, I think the way they're reacting is because of an issue they're expecting, like in the team, they're all expecting someone to react in a certain way, like they did in Astralis. It was always Glaive, as soon as they got one opening, like for example, on Mirage, or like this was a long time ago when they played Mirage. Um, uh, when when they were CT and any, any enemy team were on T side, if they knew they were playing a default um, and they had information on the majority of the players when they were playing CT, you could always see a flank, either an A-Abs, uh, it was Glaive taking it, or someone else just pushing A-Abs or pushing Slope, getting that information and cutting them off. Right now, like I, I feel like they're not even reacting to the, the information they have, like um, you, you, you said, Hiton. I, I think they're just expecting someone to do it in the team, and maybe they're just missing that little extra like timing. It could be five-second timing that they're not taking, Instead, it goes into either communication or misunderstandings or uh, maybe even um, colliding with each other on what is the right move to make when you're already in that position to think what the right move is. You're always too late to make that decision, whatever it is correct or right. So you're making a decision in between. And I felt like, uh, and I feel like Glaive really did a great job on taking those small, um, small gambles on the timings and they're not doing it as much uh, here and 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 all respect like uh, i really like apex how like he has turned out as a player and becoming igl and doing a lot of stuff for his team um uh, and he cannot only be the only one that does does this you know at one point you need someone else to help him out and i'm pretty sure magus is helping um but yeah they just need to find themselves. And uh, it is hard to find yourself when you're having such a difficulty, uh, uh, difficult time to get that vision in the team. And, you know, this is how we're going to play uh, or whatnot. It might take like six more months until we see them, th th as see them the potential they have. One thing that um, with, with adding on to what you addressed was when it comes to those split second decisions and and you're in a 2v2 clutch and you need the call to come out instantaneously and it looks like there's a slight bit of lag between the reaction time of the players on vitality where you're like surely that call already came through surely they know the flank is there as you said um that's where it's apparent and i have seen so many instances of that and i saw that early in g2 earlier in the year and i'm seeing that quite currently with vitality and i think that can i that can really i i mean i've never competed at the level you guys have and i don't know what it's like to play in international teams where you're used to communicating in swedish i have played matchmaking where we all call something a different thing and that's kind of hilarious but um it, it doesn't at, at this level of counter-strike where that split second will win you around that's where it's it's adding up and that's probably where they lack the value um and I was, but I was going to add though, on the note of how these teams, specifically G2 and Vitality, performed at the RMR. One goes three and one. One goes three and two, with two losses being to Navi and Phase. So they're still like you might say games are getting closer, but they still got the job done. And I think as additionally with that quote I mentioned about Apex, where it's the most competitive. You look at the teams that go through. And every major, it seems like there's fewer and fewer spots of those like surprise teams, like a Quantum Bellator Fire or something getting through. There's fewer of those openings left because the tide is rising of good Counter-Strike. There's more money coming in every year. There's better analysts, better coaching, better IGLs. And what it's doing is meaning that when, when you say the two and two teams have a Vitality or, or a, um, who else, a Stralis in them, that's not because those teams are playing terrible it's because everybody is coming and playing better and and so i do completely agree with the comments that were made prior about you know g2 and vitality have not been to their um uh, full abilities 
But I also think that we have to put a little asterisk here and say the teams that they're coming up against in the RMR in the qualification are better than we've ever seen. And so a 3-0 or a 3-1 or 3-2 is still, hey, we came and got the job done. We didn't end up like a fanatic or an OG and just fall flat. So I do want to say I still think they can do some damage here in, 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 at the major. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree with you. Like, um, it just, um, I think what I meant is that holding them at the high standard, even though it's a, like the biggest event yet uh, this year. So it's like, um, yeah, I, uh, you kind of want to put the pressure on them. But like like you said, it's, uh, it's hard when you have all the pressure on you as well. Um, and just one more thing to point out is the communication, right? Uh, we, we're saying a lot of these teams have a delay in their comms or whatnot. Every top team in the world does not excuse uh, communication as a, a thing. You cannot lose because of communication. What is the one thing you can control as a team? One thing you can control is your, your own communication, not the enemy team. No one can be a factor to your comms. Uh, and I feel like that's not an excuse for losing or playing bad. That That is just out of the window this day. I remember there was a lot of times, um, like a few few years back, a lot of teams said, yeah, we didn't communicate well. Well, it, that is not a, like, that is one thing you have in your control and yet you're not doing it, then that's on you. That's uh, like, that, that shouldn't be even a, an excuse in my opinion. Can I ask you something, Golden? I mean, I never played international. I only played with Swedish players. Is the transitioning, I mean, since you've done both, is the transitioning hard? Because if you look at Vitality and G2, especially Vitality, there are some, how can you say, there, there are some, <laughs> some communication flaws, at least when we see the games. Is it hard in the beginning? Is that something that develops during time? Um, or do you feel like you're getting better at? Definitely. Like, what I did, for example, was that I started thinking in English to prevent uh, thinking like uh, two times about something, what I'm going to say or what I'm going to do. And I just thought in my normal routine as thinking in English. And yes, it, it takes time to get accustomed to, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the delay is two seconds or three seconds. You can still communicate if you are focused enough. I, I just feel like, uh, using that excuse is no longer viable because it, it goes away in practice. That's like when you practice with your team, that should be your um, time to practice English. Like practice calling it. Okay, thinking about um, uh, okay as an IGL, uh, I was thinking okay, this is this, these are the calls I would do in Swedish. How will I do them in English? And take one step at a time, and then. It, it, I, I, one month and then you're in. It, it doesn't take more than that. This is five yeah. months in now, too, right? Like these guys, this yeah. is not, this is not the, this, we just brought uh, Monesi or we just brought one of the Astralis guys over just now. They, they've had time to work on it. I, I agree with you, Golden. Yeah. And if you like, I'm not, I'm not saying that what an issue is, uh, for me that I can fix is maybe harder for someone else or maybe I have a harder time fixing other issues, right? But uh, but let, let's be frank here. We're playing FPL. We're playing, we're speaking English in interviews. We're doing a lot of stuff in English nowadays. So it's it, sh it should, shouldn't be that we don't know English. I know that, for example, Monacy, he played a lot of FPL. He called in English all the time. So, I mean... I don't think it's the communication that is the mm -hmm. most problematic right now, even th though we might think or they might say it. Uh, but if they look look down like, okay, how could I have done this better? And then I promise that um, maybe it's not the communication. Um, but yeah, uh, and, and also maybe for, for the French players, it's harder for them to speak English. We know that French players have a harder time to speak English um, since like uh, I, when I was in, when I've been in France there's not a lot of like people speaking English and they have a lot like a hard time to speak it so that could be also a factor but I, I'm not entirely sold on it. Hmm. 
But there are definitely so issues I, there. There are definitely a lot of issues yeah. there. Yeah, Adam? I, I'm happy to hear that the communication is not the excuse if Vitality goes out 0-3, because that was my other bet that I made uh, already. It was Big Clan and Vitality at 18-1. to 1. Um, So I'm glad to hear that. And, and it's mostly off of, I'm hoping, good coaching, a good strap book, good communication, and then firepower, superstar potential that, you know, Zaiwu has been a little bit under where he has been over prior years. And if that comes to fruition, where he does get back to top two in the world, that that 18 to one will pay off a little bit and I'll have some opportunity for hedge hedges come playoffs. But I'm really, it's, it's nice to hear Golden's perspective on, Hey, this is not an alibi for poor performance. Owen three results. They've had time to practice their calls. So I kind of feel like, obviously, we're on the same page seeing that Vitality and G2 aren't major contenders right now. Um, but I'd love to hear, like, I'll go through one by one of you, like, how far do you reckon these guys can go? I think uh, Heaton already said playoffs or something, uh, but let's let's just go through that. So Heaton, uh, how far do you reckon these two teams can get? I think they both have the firepower to, to win the whole major. I mean, the, both of those teams came out of, how can you say, the Navi era. They're both supposed to be Navi killer teams, uh, and mm -hmm. they are on paper, uh, uh, even though Navi has been struggling compared to, you know, the their recent year. L recently, they're still the team to beat. I, I think that, I mean, they both have the potential to win it. I mean, just as long as they improve and just like Adam said, have a very organized <clears throat> playbook and how to do this and prepare for every single game, they can both win it. They, no questions asked. They have the firepower for it. They have the experience. They have all the all the, the stuff needed to to win the tournament, so they, they can they can win it. And Golden, um, so I have two of like what I think they need. So I think Vitality is a like Apex will call if they they need momentum. When when they have momentum, Apex like how they he will play and the the team's team is around him. He plays with a lot of confidence, and when they have that momentum i think they will get like top four at least and vitality is in a state where ens is right now or like uh, where vitality should be as ens is right now ens is finding themselves they're finding you know those wins though they uh, have a like deep runs uh they're playing well they are like trusting each other i feel like vitality needs that they need the same thing as ens is doing right now and for um, G2, um, I, I don't think momentum will affect how a a Alexi is calling that much. I just feel like they will, they need to also kind of uh, have a few easy wins. You know, they win 16-5, 16-7, 16-8, and then you, you will see them, like the trajectory during the playoffs go off. I, I, they're just... The barriers is very thin for them to cr cross over, mm -hmm. and if they do that, there's no doubt in mind. Like he didn't say, they they are contenders for winning it. Adam, are you on the same wavelength? So uh, I am with one team, but I'm not with the other. Um, G two, I I'm not a believer, and I think it has a, a lot to do with the the perception of the personalities within that team. I don't know if it's just the when the camera hits them at the wrong time, these guys look like they don't want to be there sometimes. And they're and Alexi B looks like that sometimes with OG previously. Nico was when he was calling previously under phase. It and even going back to most sports days, there's memes about it. And I'm not saying that these aren't mature professionals that won't get over that on major playoff day and stuff like that. Um, but I I'm very cautious with G2, especially given where the pricing is. Right now, Nico is the second, is the runner up for MVP outside Simple, while his team is at 13 to 1. So, again, there's a little bit of weird odd discrepancy there. On the Vitality end, I've already mentioned that I've taken them as, as my second bet. Um, right now, Vitality has won less than half of their maps this year in 2022. However, they only have one loss to a team outside the top 10. So if we say, I mean, look, 16-13, 16-13 to Navi the other day. Navi is not Navi last year where they had an 80% map win rate. They're Navi where they have a 70% map win rate. They're still, and that was with a sub earlier this year. So Navi is, if we're saying Navi is the 
the the metric for you know teams on a good pace for this year's major vitality did not play poorly against them they probably had a chance to win and they didn't but i would say vitality has the better overall um balance and and i i'm just not a big g2 guy and, and i'm sorry for people that feel like the next the simple uh, prodigy and nico like they're the perfect combo with alexi calling but i'm just uh, I'm, I'm and i'm not a hater i just i don't like the price on them and it also uh, previous experiences betting them just not sure uh, i, I want to back them at this time until i see something different yeah, we've kind of made this a G2 Vitality show, but I, I mean, that's what <laughs> most people will want to tune in on anyway. So I don't think that's too much of a problem to that. Um, but as a kind of like a, just a, a final discussion, perhaps for this particular stage, this is where we see some Brazilian teams also make their mark. Uh, we've got some heavy hitters in a lot of these teams. Um, and I think there is just, um, there are some kind of, whispers going around maybe imperial is there hope or something like that when it comes to the challenger stage at least uh do you guys think that they're um that they're kind of boot camping occasionally to any you because who's kind of helped them to get to that level to get uh, on top of these teams uh are we looking at some surprising sort of play styles to catch out a lot of these european accustomed teams what what are, what are we looking here golden i'd love to hear your thoughts since i'm pretty sure you probably scrimmed a few already yeah um, I, I think for them is adjusting to play against uh, like the, the European teams. Uh, uh, it just been uh, there's a lot of uh, like they they will probably need some kind of uh, surprising moves in their strat books or in their play style. And right now, I feel like um, just they they are almost one dimensional how like they, they approach a few stuff and maybe throw out the you know the 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 the, the what is it called a bit of the structure play more random because these players will like fur when he was the one of the best players uh, a few years back he was like super hard to play against like i remember having uh, a theory where before just before playing them, okay, guys, this is what Fur gonna do. He will do this if we do certain things on overpass. He was always push this. We need to clear this spot. And I remember going to the match, and I, all I was thinking, and some of the players was, okay, is he dead? Where is he? Did we clear that? Did we do this? And that is super annoying to play against. And I feel like they need a bit, a bit of that into their gameplay, and they they could be like. Uh, doing a lot of damage yeah uh it's it kind of feels like they can do really well against some teams but when you want to be what major worthy you kind of need that more that extra dimension of yes. play you kind of need to be uh at that higher uh echelon I, I guess adam any thoughts i don't i don't know if it was against golden's team but there was an overpass map where fur was like 17 and one he was playing the eighth half of the map from underpass over to to long and he was wherever he was pushing constantly he was getting like three frags and get catching people in the back flanking constantly so i recall that type of play from him very aggressive very unpredictable and just good accuracy as well he's just a superstar aimer so i yeah that's an interesting point about it needing to be back to bring imperial far yeah all right. Well, Heaton, you got any thoughts on our Brazilian teams or any other team you want to bring out before we kind of put this episode to a close? Well, I think Imperial are going to make it. I bl I'm a believer in Fallen. Uh, mm -hmm. To be fair, I mean, they have so much experience in, in that team. And they, they have because they've been under the radar for so long. I think they're going to be, you know, I, like Bad News Eagle. They're going to come out swinging yeah. with their hearts in a different way than many other teams. And I mean, those are some, some of the most of them have won majors before, right? But I think they're gonna. This is their time to shine again. I'm a believer. I think Imperial are gonna make it, uh, and I'm also very excited to see Astralis developing. Even though they had a tough run in um, in the RMR, I, I do believe that they're on the right track. So, 
Well, I think we've all gained some really nice insights in this particular episode. There's much more to come, guys. We'll be talking about the Nordic scene as well as the high heavy hitters of the tournament. Who potentially can win this maze? I should make sure you stick around for the rest of the episodes. You can make you can be sure that those will be even better than the ones you've listened to already.